Hi there, this is a little introduction video for lab. I'm Professor Miller. Uh, you may have already seen some of my lecture material. The stuff I'm going to talk about in this video is very specific to what my lab expectations are. Uh, it's going to be a little more complicated this semester simply because we have to split the class in half in order to ensure social distancing. And on top of that, we're also going to spread out into both of our lab spaces. So that means that any given room is at about 25% of its normal capacity. So lots of room to spread out. And we are also increasing ventilation in the lab spaces. Um, that's positive because it means that there's um, more fresh air coming in, which is healthier for us. It's a negative because it means it's a little bit loud. So. One of the suggestions that I have is if you're able to purchase a personal microphone with a speaker, that will help all of us communicate better when you have questions in lab. Um, it's not required for the course. It'll just make it a little bit easier for you to get your questions answered um, without having to shout at me. So I, uh, I don't mind shouting though. If you're able to do that, that's fine with me as well. You just have to project pretty loud. The one I got, um, it's wireless, but you can get a wired kind, but it's just a speaker and a headset. And this is so that you'll be able to hear me in lab um, without getting a sore throat by the end of the day. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing you're going to need is disposable gloves. We do have some, so if you have difficulty finding it, don't stress out about it. You can borrow what we have, uh, but there are three types. It's vinyl, nitrile, or latex. Most people find the, the nitrile to be the most comfortable, but they're also the most expensive. And latex is the least expensive, but um, you can develop an allergy to them if you use them for too long. Um, if you're already allergic to latex, don't use those, okay? But the vinyl is in between the two. Um, they're not as comfortable as either one of them, but they are less expensive than nitrile. So, Really, one box will be more than enough for the semester. You can also buy them by the pair at the bookstore and by the 10 pack. I think one pack of 10 will probably be fine for this semester. You also need to get lab safety goggles. Okay, so these are not the ones that look like sunglasses. They need to touch your face all the way around because that's the only way to prevent liquids from splashing into your eye. Um, there are styles that are anti-fog. Those tend to work better with the masks on because they have a coating on them to prevent some of the humidity from accumulating. If you can't find that, you can also just wash them with soap and water and, and, and then smear some soap on it and let it dry and wipe that off. That, that coating should help with anti-fog properties as well. Okay. Um, the other thing that you're going to need to have is a lab coat or a lab apron. You can get both of those in the bookstore as well. Um, oh, I forgot to say, gloves can be purchased anywhere there's a first aid or paint department. So um, pharmacies, Walmart, hardware stores like Lowe's and Harbor Freight, stuff like that. And the same thing is true for the, the safety glasses as well. Okay, so that's the lab equipment. Uh, you'll also need to have a lab notebook. The bookstore sells very nice ones for about $15 to $20 a piece. That would be enough to last you for Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2. Um, you can also find them on Amazon and such. Um, you don't have to get ones that make duplicate pages this semester because you're going to be photographing your work and uploading it that way. Um, but it is handy to have a table of contents and like a section in the beginning of your lab notebook for the table of contents and have the pages numbered and headings already on there if you can. Otherwise, if you can't afford that, you can get a composition notebook and fill that stuff in manually by yourself. On our website, um, under the start here tab, I made a post about the do's and don'ts of lab notebook. Make sure you go look at that. Those rules are an important cornerstone for how you should operate within science in general. This may be your first time keeping a formal laboratory notebook and it's important to learn how to do that properly. Um, so go to start here and then you want to click on the one that says essential lab items before the first person, the first in-person lab day. Right, so if we go, you can see that all I did was click here 
and it's this folder right here. You also need to watch this safety video. This is really important. And then when you get in the class, there's going to be a quiz on these topics as well as, this, as the stuff that I've told you today about PPE. That's the goggles and gloves and so forth. Oh, I forgot the last part of the PPE that's it's required in the whole college is the masks, of course. If you don't have masks, I have some you can you can you can borrow or have really. I don't want them back. OK, um, but make sure that you're following all of the campus protocols for social distancing, washing your hands and wearing your mask. It's really important that we try to minimize any kind of uh, risk for, for everybody. So you're going to want to watch the safety video, read the safety contract. So the first thing you're going to do in the lab is sign this contract and then take a lab quiz. And that lab quiz is, is going to basically have questions from this video. And it might also have questions from your syllabus, the lab syllabus you can find right here. And it might also have questions about lab notebook, um, what kind of PPE to wear, so stuff like that. That's what you want to you do. Generally, what I tell people is when you're watching a video, just watching the video is not going to help you absorb the information. You really do need to take some notes or at the end of the video, write down the important points and see what you can remember. And if you don't remember as much as you feel like maybe you should, just go back and watch it and do the same thing again. OK, so um, a little quick tour of our Blackboard site for lab. I've already shown you the Start Here tab. The other feature of the Start Here tab um, Hopefully you've already seen this part because I'm, you know, th this is your welcome video. Then you're going to watch the lab safety video. The last point here is to look at some essential tech tips. And this is something I add to over the semester um, so that essentially things that are confusing for people are available as pretty short little um, tips to help you. Okay, so the first one is how to make a video like this. There's a lot of ways to do it, but this is just one. Um, a little conversation about Google, which is a very helpful application for group work in our course. And then probably the most popular is the third one, how to take scans of your work for free. By the way, I don't want you to buy anything for that. But how to scan your work so that you can get good feedback and improve uh, for your next ass assessment. There's another Blackboard orientation here. I think this is probably for one of my other courses. So you probably don't need to watch that one. Um, and then in Blackboard discussion boards, there are rubrics embedded. And so I made this video to show how you can find that. And we won't be using Collaborate very much this semester. But if we do, this is how you can access the recordings for Collaborate. And then I also made a little video about how to use Microsoft Word to type chemical equations. All right, and so you can use those videos. If you find, find an idea for another video, let me know, and I will be happy to make more, more videos of whatever topics are of interest to you. Other features, this will be where your lab syllabus is. This is where announcements that are specific to lab will go. Maybe I have to change a due date or we have a snow day. Probably not, but maybe, that kind of thing. You can also click here to email me directly. It'll open right up in your browser. Um, and it'll it'll allow you to tell me what um, whatever you want really. It's handy when you send an email to a professor to tell to tell them what class you're in specifically. Remember that we almost all have many sections of the same courses, so you might even want to say what time and day the course meets. Um, that way, there's some context for the question, and I don't have to spend I don't have to look through six different Blackboard sites to figure out where you belong. Um, so yeah. Especially this semester, I'll need your help to know where you're at and what you're doing. Because of the nature of the, the lab being split up and the lectures being online and so, so significantly more independent than usual, it will help me a lot if you're very specific about your questions. That way I can answer you faster. Otherwise, we might have to go back and forth trying to figure out what assignment you're working on and what your question is and which class you're in and all that kind of stuff. So if you start your emails with that information right up front, it'll save a lot of effort for everybody. I do try to be pretty fast on email, but you'll see on the on the syllabus that there is also a phone number that you can call. It kind of acts a little bit funny because it's Google Voice, so you say your name and wait a little while and I have to 
approve the phone call to come through is kind of like a screening thing and I don't know how to turn it off. So um, be patient with that if you do have to call me. Um, also, you can text that phone number. It shows up like a regular text message. So um, however you're comfortable, that's fine. The other way to communicate is to use discussion boards. So in the lab, I'm not going to put a specific introduction prompt, but in the lab, this is where we can exchange data. This is where we can ask for help and maybe another student is going to be able to answer you faster than I can. Um, maybe you have a question about technology, something like that. Use the discussion boards. You can start your own forums. You can, um, you can help each other that way. Use that resource. It's very, very good. And then, of course, your grades are going to be right here. Now, lab is 25% of your total course grade. And you do have to pass the lab with at least a 60%, so that's a D. So in other words, our policy on campus here is if you fail the chemistry lab, you fail the course, regardless of what your lecture grade is. So make sure you're keeping up with the work in the course and the lab. Don't try to just uh, wait till the last minute to do everything in the lab. It's really not going to work. The two tie together quite a lot too, so as we're learning something, we're going to apply it in lab, and then we're going to learn a little bit more about that topic, so it's important to be doing both of them. Um, you will get an email on Friday, um, right before classes open up, telling you if you're in Group A or Group B. Group A will be coming to lab the first week to perform the trace contamination experiment, so um, that's the second day of classes for us. So you're going to want to look at this procedure, print it out, know what you're doing. The campus printers are available. And actually, I'm sorry, you don't need to print this out because our technician has already done that for you. But in the future experiments, you're going to want to print these out. Um, I'll have all of our pr procedures available to you um, at this lab schedule link. And so what you can do is just click these and print them all off in the beginning of the semester. Um, so there's two, actually two parts to the lab schedule. I'll show you that. Uh, the first part is if you're in group A, and I'm going to add due dates to the side of this, but these links are all the procedures that you're going to need. And the second part is if you're in group B, you'll know by checking your email. Make sure you do that before you come to lab on Tuesday, okay? I don't want you making a trip for no reason. Um, the other difficulty about lab this semester is we don't have a lot of empty spaces, which means it's pretty difficult to do lab makeups. Um, try to plan ahead if you have to miss lab. Talk to me ahead of time and we'll see if we can fit you into one of the other sessions. But there's no guarantees because we are pretty full. Okay, but I always try to accommodate it if it's for a legitimate reason. Um, so, yeah. That group A, group B is going to be a little confusing, so I separated where you will submit your work. Almost all of your lab work is going to be turned in in Blackboard. So if you're in group A, you will click this link, and everything will be presented in the order that you're going to be doing it. Um, that means group B looks a little funky, because we had to sort of rearrange things in order to make it work out. And so first off, group B will be doing an at-home experiment called separation of a mixture. And then they will actually, that's actually listed as the second experiment, and then they will actually be doing the third experiment, which is a two-parter, so there's two links. And then you finally get to do experiment one. So by the end of the semester, actually by Thanksgiving, everybody will be on the same page. It's just uh, a little bit odd in the very beginning because of when um, everything starts up. I also am embedding a calendar to show you what's coming up, what's due, and that's another visual, visual way of knowing what's happening. So there will be dates on the lab schedule, dates in the syllabus, and a calendar so you can keep track of what you're doing. The main thing is the different due dates for group A versus group B, so don't be confused by that. Everything is labeled as group A or group B. So hopefully that um, helps a little bit. You're going to be doing six in-person experiments this semester, and the rest of them are going to be stuff at home. So we have tried to make sure to distill the class down. That's a chemistry joke. Distillation is a fun chemistry activity. But we've tried to distill it down to the most essential skills in those six 
um, in-person labs, the things that you just can't do at home. And then we took the things that are doable at home and we, we are making you lab kits. So if you're in group A, you will pick up your lab kit the first week during lab. You'll do the experiment the second week um, and then you'll bring the materials back the third week. If you're in group B, you need to come and get your supplies in the first week, the first couple of days of class, so that you can do the experiment during the first week at home. Um, and then when you come back to lab the next week, you'll bring the supplies back that you didn't use. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you. If you have any questions or difficulty, please reach out. My email is amiller at mvcc.edu. I look forward to a